We're in LA for the Mogul Moves Chess Boxing Championship. While we were here, we had a fascinating discussion with the two competitors in the main event, Amon Hamilton and Lawrence Trent. It's going to be an exciting match. I hope you guys enjoy the conversation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, up the stairs. I'm on, super excited, man. Look at this guy. Hey, it's gone. Hey, good to see you again. Thomas. Hey, Thomas, nice to meet you. Cool. Let's, uh, let's get moving. All right, we're here with uh, Aman Hamilton, one of the competitors in the main event of uh, the very exciting chess boxing event we have coming up on Sunday. Aman, welcome uh, to the show. It's uh, it's been a while. <laughs> hey, what's up, uh, Christian? It's good to be here. You and uh, and Fabi, you know, I, I've been following the the podcast. It's uh, it's nice to be here in person, man. It's two nights. So you're two nights away from. Uh, probably your biggest night of your career is going to be a lot of eyes on you, uh, a lot of eyes online as yeah. well as in person. It's a huge venue. How are you feeling right now? It's definitely the biggest night of my boxing career. That's for sure. <laughs> it's the first night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the biggest night. Yeah, it's the biggest night of my boxing career. But uh, I agree. I think it's it's something that like I've definitely been looking forward to anticipating. Like I've known about it for such a long time. Right. And it's weird that, you know, it's all built up to this this one day or like this 30 minutes or I don't even know how long it's going to take. So it's exciting. Uh, I'm nervous for sure. But, uh, you know, just got to turn those nerves into energy at the right moment. So I'm excited, really. How are the nerves different comparing to a chess event? You know, a chess event is like nine days, two yeah. weeks at a time. This one is just one night and you have to maximize your potential for that particular night. Yeah, I think I think honestly, it has to do with the fact that like I need my arms and my extremities so when I get nervous in chess it's like you'll see people shaking their legs or you can be fidgety but at the end of the day like you just need to make a move and it all goes on in your head I'm really good at like internalizing that mm. but with boxing it's like I've experienced it where I've just been nervous and it's like you know the hands get a little shaky and you can't have that you lose like your power and, and your confidence so I think the biggest difference is that that the nerves kind of flow through your whole body because you need to use your, your whole body mm. well, there, there's this thing like as chess players we get really nervous before, but then once we get into it, you know, it's like autopilot because you've been in that situation a million times. Yeah. Is it a totally different feeling or do you think it's going to be a totally different feeling because this is a first time thing for you? I, th I think that it might. And I'm, you know, that's like a scary thing to think about that I won't have that same level like that I have in chess where I can just fall back into a rhythm and, you know, this feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but I've definitely done some some training where it's been like, you know, oh, this this doesn't feel normal, um, but I whenever I really get into a rhythm um, with boxing and, and training, it's always felt good. So I'm just going to try to treat it like the gym at home or like the training sessions, because I think that helps. How many sparring matches have you done to prepare for, for this fight? Uh, so I, I actually think sparring's like really important. I don't know how other people are approaching it, um, testing the exact format of the fight, like switching between mm -hmm. the chess and the boxing. I've been doing that because I think that's really valuable. Yeah. So I've sparred a lot um, with like a few different people. I think it's good to switch up the styles, not just like seeing the same left hook uh, come at you or something yeah. like that. So I've sparred quite a bit. Um, and I, I think that's probably been like a cornerstone of my my prep, at least. Has it been like once you're switching from the boxing back to the chess, being fatigued or winded, has that dr drastically or even somewhat decreased your chess level, do you feel? I uh, think it definitely decreased it, um, but sometimes I just don't know if I'm just playing bad anyway. <laughs> um, so you know, it's hard to get a, a distinction there, but I honestly thought it would be worse. Okay. I thought that I would be uh, m not necessarily more fatigued, but I thought that the fatigue would affect my mm -hmm. chest more than it has so far, which is you know encouraging. Like yeah. It's a nice, nice mm -hmm. feeling to have that, but I was definitely getting the vibe from like, seeing uh, watching other chess boxing matches and speaking to people who've done it that like i would be a 1500. so i was like a <laughs> little scared of that and uh, reassuring to me i made some moves and i was like okay these are these are acceptable yeah. these, these aren't bad 
what would you say your level is in boxing right now? You've been training for a few months now. Uh, at the beginning, you were looking a bit shaky, a bit timid. How would you uh, describe your style right now and your improvement as well? I mean, it's a really tough question because I, I if I was thinking about what's an 1800 in boxing, I don't even know what that mm. looks like. Mm. Um, I can just say that I felt for sure like a like a 400, like a baby deer with like, you know, wobbly legs at the start. And I feel comfortable now, um, probably to the point where if it's between chess and boxing, like I'm looking forward to the boxing mm. and not coming in with some strategy of like, oh, I'm just whatever, you know, survive the boxing and get to the chess. Um, I think it'll be competitive in both, but uh, I feel good and I just don't know how to like quantify it because I don't know what to compare it to. Like I have no, no experience in boxing, but if I had to like guess, maybe like 1300, 1200. Lawrence has been talking a lot of trash uh, so yeah. far, and we actually had a chat with him uh, yesterday, and he was saying that he's going to come guns blazing in, in the boxing uh, event. How do you feel about that? Are you intimidated at all? Describe your feelings about that statement. Yeah, I mean, I think it's expected. Um, Lawrence doesn't have a lot of guns to blaze in chess, <laughs> so like, I definitely expect that in, in the boxing. But it's also, I think it's just the kind of guy Lawrence is. Like, he's a talker. Like, he, his idea of selling a fight or hyping a fight is definitely, you know, words, online, Twitter, um, stuff like that. So that's just what he does. Um, I'm excited to get into it, but I don't feel intimidated by that. Uh, I, but I do think that it's part of, like, his, I think it's part of his overall mm. act. Mm -hmm. Like, his little mystique around Lawrence is that he wants to be that talker. He wants to be in your ear. Um, you know, he's he's the guy that's going to be right there with the, at the face off with the, you know, the mitts up and everything kind of like right in your face. So I expect that from him. So for me, it's kind of by the book so far when it comes to Lawrence. But I think the reason that it's not that intimidating is because I expected it. Mm. Mm. Ha have you had a look at his other, because I saw he had a grudge match with Greg Shahadi, which was purely chess, not chess boxing. That's right. But it was the same sort of style with the, you know, talk beforehand and the back and forth and, and videos. Did you look at that and try to like get some insight into his mentality from that? <laughs> well, I, I didn't even just look at it. I commentated that match. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I commentated that match on chess.com. And I, I think I even interviewed mm -hmm. like the both of them after the match. So like I got a lot of insight. I oh. saw the whole thing go down. Mm -hmm. I saw his chess. Um, you know, I want to say like for sure credit to Lawrence's chess. Like I feel like he's working on it, but I feel like he's been working on it for like two decades. Like Lawrence mm -hmm. is always working on his chess, <laughs> but, but really like he, his chess in that match I thought was impressive and I think people kind of counted him out before it. So I know that, you know, the chess is not just going to be a cakewalk or anything. Like people who don't really know chess are like, oh, so you're the stronger chess player and he's going to come at you in the boxing. I just don't see it that way. I think it's more even in both categories. Yeah, especially in one game where it's not so easy to prove an advantage in a single chess game because right. someone can play really, really well in one chess game and not make serious mistakes. As, exactly. And, you know, it's not always up to you and your chess strength, right? Right. You can't control everything. It's like, you know, one mistake, especially when, you know, you're getting kind of smacked in the head between, you know, every couple minutes. Uh, I think that is going to mean that the chess game just has less and less impact. Um, and you're going to get a lot, lots of boxing rounds. It's mm -hmm. not like someone is going to get, you can't really get KO'd in chess in two minutes the way you could in boxing, theoretically. Yeah. So Speaking of that, um, did you get adjusted to that feeling of getting hit in the head? How do you feel about that? Are you ready for it? Doesn't feel good, I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't been in like you know a fight, yeah. Like a, you know, like let's say on the street or something. I haven't defended a, a lady uh, uh -huh. <laughs> in need in but my life. But you are training yet. with your uh, coach, and yeah. he's pretty good. I mean, he looks sharp. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I always remind myself that I'm training with someone who's like you know the fighter Lawrence will never be. Mm. So. And that's not, not even a diss. It's like the fighter I'll never be. Of course. So I know that I'm training with someone who's hitting me harder, more accurately, you know, fighting better than what I'm going to be up against. So it kind of gives you some confidence when you can hang in there with someone that you know is going to be tougher. Um, so I think that's been, you know, good for the old ego. But uh, I've been hit. I've been hit and it hurts. Um, I've been like, I've taken some pretty tough shots to the, you know, the jaw, the head. Okay and that uh, does not feel good, but I'm glad that I did because I think that if that happens for the first time in your first fight, then it might be scary. And I don't think it will anymore. What's worse, is it the headshots or the body shots? Uh, I think 
I think ultimately like a very well placed body shot, probably one that you're not gonna throw in sparring, like because you just don't want to even hit it. You don't want to hurt the guy. You you might not even want to hit it. Um, I think one of those is probably worse, Mm -hmm. but I think more than likely, you know, if you think about like amateur boxing, I feel like most people are like straight shooters, head. Um, So I'm not sure which one we'll see more of in our fight, but I really feel like. Uh, for those that don't know, boxing or fighting, like a hard body shot is killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One thing that actually cracked me up um, as we were uh, in in anticipation to this event is your first response to his uh, uh, callouts when you were at <laughs> McDonald's and you were eating your fries and you were just chilling. But now I'm looking at you. You're looking good, man. You've been doing a lot of work. Tell us a bit about your uh, training routine leading up to this event. Yeah, you know, the McDonald's thing is obviously <laughs> a bit of a joke, but it's it's true that I did have to put on a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, that much is true. You know, like 10, 15 pounds, which is a thing on its own, which is tough to do, but it's tougher to do when you're actually actively, you know, training and kind of losing weight, getting in shape as a yeah. result. Um, so the, my goals kind of work against one another, which has been tough for me. Um, so I've been, I haven't been, let's say like dieting super hard, it's more about like just intake, like just eating a lot. And then once I got to like, you know, 180 and I knew that I was like comfortably there, then I started to be a little more conscious about like what was, what was actually going in my body. Um, but it's been hard. I, I, I'll say that honestly, like it's not easy to gain weight, especially when you're like actively trying to train boxing as well. So people are always like saying, oh, you know, that's the problem I want to have. You just get to eat. That's amazing. But it's been hard, I swear. We asked the same question to Lawrence yesterday. In terms of your training, what percentage has been cardio, what has been pure boxing technique and training, and what has been weight, uh, weight training? Um, it's a good question. Maybe if I'm like going percentages, like 40, 40, 20. 20 for the weight training. Yeah, maybe like yeah. 40, 40, 20, something like that. Um, I think cardio is super important. Um, I mean, everyone's got their own strat, but mm-hmm. um, I don't think it's like a special strat that cardio is important, like for boxing. So uh, definitely lots of lots of cardio for uh, for me. And, you know, the fact that I had to gain weight as well, like I don't want to do too much cardio yeah. because I got to pack on the pounds. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if you it's very difficult to gain weight while doing a lot of cardio. Yeah, at least for me, like I, if I'm start doing cardio, I'm, there's no way I'm going to gain a single pound. Yeah, 100 percent. But so. cardio is so important for boxing as well, right? Yeah. So it, honestly, the balance was tough. And I, that's why I was like, fortunate but also you know I, I surrounded myself with people that knew better than me um but i was fortunate that i didn't have to think about everything like i wasn't trying to count the calories mm-hmm. and like you know make all of the training so it, it was nice that some people were handling some of those responsibilities and wasn't all shouldered on me but uh yeah i i agree it was it was a fine line very fine line between not hitting the skip rope uh, too much and, you know, making sure I made it to McDonald's once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about uh, Lawrence, uh, he used to do uh, salsa. He's a salsa dancer. So that's going to help his footwork. <laughs> now, you're a mountain climber, right? Tell us a bit about that. Do you think that's going to help you in uh, Sunday's match? I'm not sure if I believe either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence no, is a salsa dancer. L- Lawrence, a Lawrence salsa is a dancer, decent yeah. dancer. He's, He's a like a 2200 salsa yeah. in salsa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Wow. Uh, I didn't know that. Um, I'm not sure on air I could claim mountain climber. <laughs> I'll just go with climber. Yeah. Mountain sounds far too accomplished. Um, but yeah, I, I do some rock climbing. Um, I think I think the salsa thing's hilarious. I don't know how that's gonna help <laughs> or if that's gonna help. Maybe I'd, with the footwork. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I'd like to I'd like to say like footwork. That's yeah. that's probably gotta be the, the most helpful. Um, but if I'm thinking about Lawrence just as like a chess player, as a human being, just as a man, like Footwork is not what I think of. I just, I, I think of, you know, maybe maybe power, maybe all out, you know, maybe pressure, high intensity, but like not footwork. But maybe it's because he's got it on lock because of the salsa. You know? it, it's, you it's funny because he was so, when we were, when he was my manager, he was so into salsa <laughs> that like every tournament he would try to find a salsa club the same way that like Maurice Ashley does the same thing. Like every city yeah. they're like, where's, where's the salsa club? That's impressive. I had no idea. But yeah, it's it's a bit different from boxing. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. would assume. But yeah. I think it's going to help with the footwork. I think that's. Yeah, yeah. I really believe that. Honestly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now tell us a bit about the. Uh, since you've been here in LA, you came a couple of days ago. Did you do any uh, training? How are you dealing with a fight week? 
Well, I came, I came early, like about a week early because I mean, we've got snow in Canada, yeah, yeah. literally. So I'm <laughs> getting used to like new weather, um, you know, shocks the body, like just feels different. Um, so I wanted to make sure I got here ahead of time. Three hours, not a huge time difference, but it's still time difference. And, you know, I get pretty tired uh, at the end of the day. So I wanted to be here early to just accustom a few of the new things that, that I was going to be experiencing. Um, so I did that. I've been, you know, doing a little bit of training, but I don't think you really want to go too hard, like fight week or even leading up. Um, you're not trying to, you know, show up to the fight with sore legs or, you know, uh, way too heavy hands that you can't lift up. But uh, just staying in shape, making sure to eat, uh, you know, keep the weight up and, you know, show up heavy, but also practiced. So I wouldn't say I'm doing like very intense training, but, you know, I definitely have done something almost every day, just something light. So it feels like you're focused on being relaxed going into uh, the fight. Have you been doing any breathing work, any meditation, anything of that nature? Um, I was actually, uh, I, they've got a former chess boxing uh, world champion, Matt Thomas, um, that I think basically is, is doing the commentary for the mm -hmm. event and yep. sort of made himself available for like, you know, questions, inquiries, streams, uh, mm. stuff like that. Um, we did like a little co-stream before I came down here to LA. And I think one of his things that he's big on is breath work. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he was telling me uh, all about that. Um, so that was probably the extent of my, uh, meditation and <laughs> breath work, uh, you know, work was with him. Um, but I've definitely been thinking about it. I think that, uh, in between the rounds, it's, it's so easy to just like get stressed and like, uh, it, it really feels sometimes like you're in a panic. So calming yourself down, especially before you're going to like play a chess game or yeah. think about the next move. I think it's really important, but. Other than that, no, I, I'm not much into that. So I think for me, it's more like just overall, like feeling good, not meditating in a literal sense, but just like being chill, being focused and just having good people around me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not like only boxing while I'm here. I'm not going out and partying yeah. or anything, yeah. but I'm definitely like chilling on the couch, like, you know, just watching a TV show, and just hanging out with the boys. Have you dabbled in any other like recovery methods? I, I'm, I'm thinking of cryotherapy. Because I saw that one of the other fighters, Dina Belenkaya, posted a video where she was trying out cryotherapy. <laughs> have, you, have you given that a thought or, or tried it? I've given it a thought right now, <laughs> but never before. Um, and thinking about it at the moment, that sounds insane. <laughs> I, I don't think I would do it. But at the same time, like I, I'm not approaching this event in like a very like scientific way or mm -hmm. anything like that. I am working like mainly on boxing, but... Um, yeah, to be real with you, like I, that stuff just hadn't crossed my mind. <laughs> Speaking of that scientific way, we know the chess bras, they like to party occasionally. Have yeah. you been uh, partying leading up to this uh, or uh, did you cut out alcohol, tequila shots? <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have cut it. And I heard that Lawrence has done the same. Um, I think that I cut it out not because, I mean, I need to gain weight. Yeah. I should be, <laughs> I should be pounding tequila shots. <laughs> Um, but I think when you're working out like every other day, it just feels good to feel good. Yeah. And you, you don't feel good when you're hungover, yeah. or God forbid, still drunk. Um, so I haven't been drinking for pretty much since I knew about the fight. So it's been a while, I'm three, four months, something like that. Uh, but it's also just like for the mentality, it just feels good when uh, someone's like, hey, have this shot. And that's happened a lot. I've refused my fair share of tequila shots bet, over I the bet, last three, yeah. four months. But <laughs> when I'm passing, when I'm handing a shot back, uh, it's nice to be like, uh, you know, I got a fight coming up. And every time I say that, it just reminds me like discipline. Yeah. Discipline, good yeah. mentality, good frame of mind to be in. So it hasn't been an issue uh, for me sticking to that. And uh, yeah, I have been doing that for the last three, four months. But there's a lot of social pressure with that too. For sure. Like with yeah. drinking in general, is, especially when you're in a big group or at a party, there's like yep. this feeling that, that you really want to, you know, for just for the, the social aspect. The FOMO. You know? has yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Has it been difficult to resist or has there been some regret? Like I really want to be out partying and doing this fun maybe stuff. Maybe I'm just a loner. I don't know. It's not been <laughs> difficult. I, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm just uh, an introvert at heart, but uh, for me, I just think I have that discipline to cut something out. Um, whether it's like, you know, Hey, I bet you, you know, can't give up fast food for a year. I can do it. Like, I just know that I can do these random kind of challenge things. And this one made more sense because it was actually for something. Um, it was, it was for the fight. Mm -hmm. Like it was a good thing to be doing. So I know exactly what you mean, but to be honest, uh, no, it hasn't been an issue. I've probably been that guy where they're like, oh, like 
I just met him on Hamilton. The guy's lame as hell. Like, <laughs> he doesn't Actually, come out and party. On, on that note, because we spoke to Lawrence and to Andrea, mm-hmm. and it seemed when they spoke about the fight and the lead up to it and why they took up the challenge that it was almost a sort of self-improvement sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Have you felt the same, that this is something that you want to do for just to prove that you can do something new and take up a new challenge? Um, well, I'm, I, the thing is, I'm also putting on weight, so I feel the worst that I've ever felt. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, this doesn't feel like self-improvement to me. This feels like punishment. <laughs> uh, I can't wait until it's over so I can go back to my uh, you know, resting uh, weight um, you know, 15 pounds ago. But uh, obviously, you know, to, to your other points, it, it definitely does feel like self-improvement in other ways because just the whole discipline of sticking to mm-hmm. something, preparing for something for three, four months out, um, you know, focusing on that for an extended period and that it's something that I don't normally do. So it's challenging for me. It's also like I want to prove to myself I can do it. I definitely want to prove to other people I can do it. Um, so there's, there's like, you know, pressure in that way, but pressure that I've put on myself by accepting, you know, the, the challenge. So, um, yeah, I'm a, you know, perfectionist. I'm, I'm interested in trying new things. I ultimately want to promote chess. I think this is a, just a different avenue that hasn't been explored yet. So I'm not sure how many people were kind of ready to step up to the chess boxing plate, but uh, I'm happy to. Yeah. You guys are sort of paving the way because it, I guess, um, there was Arik Braun, I heard as a as like a strong grandmaster. Mm-hmm. But how many grandmasters have taken up chess boxing on a like very competitive level? Yeah, like that's the thing. On a competitive level, like I was just thinking, like I have to be probably the the highest rated, you know, to do it, or at least the, the highest title to do it. Like I don't know. I, I definitely feel that it has to be true. I'm not a historian at chess I think boxing. Arik, 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 Arik Braun. I think he's like twenty six hundred. And but does he like do it? Oh, he like did he, it professionally. Very yeah. professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, That's was he very world cool. champion? I think he got close, or, or at least close? he was okay. at that level for sure. And yeah, I, I feel like amazing. maybe I played Simon... against him as well yeah. in chess. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah. Yeah. Has Simon Williams done it? I'm just like curious because it feels feel like, like yeah. something he would do, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. Like I feel like if Simon Williams hasn't done it, he's also done it just unofficially, <laughs> just just for fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just at the bar. He's tried it, but no, it definitely feels like it hasn't really, you haven't really seen too much of it. Mm-hmm. So although it's for sure been done before, um, it hasn't been anything regular and it definitely yeah. hasn't, you know, made the front page of everyone's newspaper. So um, not something that I think most people are gonna be like, oh yeah, like another grandmaster. Like, I don't even know if most people know about Arik who, who yeah. did it before. Yeah. Yeah. How's the perfect night playing out for you on Sunday? Tell us a bit about that. Oh, perfect night. Perfect night. Perfect night's different, you know, okay. because there's there's all sorts of nights. You can have the realist night, what's actually going to happen, what you think. But perfect night is is winning in boxing. Mm. I think perfect night's winning in boxing because knocking him out, or and it doesn't even have to be like it can even be on the scorecards. Or score you make cards. a draw and then you win <laughs> exactly. on the scorecards. <laughs> it it just just knowing that boxing was the area that Lawrence was outclassed, I just think would be the most infuriating for him. Mm. Mm. I agree with that. Now. This video most likely will air out tomorrow. Lawrence, 100%, is going to look at it. Any last words for Lawrence? You know, I, I actually, um, uh, Lawrence does most of the talking in our uh, chess boxing relationship here. So I leave that to him. But one thing that I, I will say and that I really believe is that, you know, I think he's underestimating me. I, I really believe that. Um, you know, he can be the favorite in his head. He can say he's the favorite. Um, he can be in great shape, like he is. He's been training boxing. There's no way that he even makes weight for this fight without being in tremendous shape. So yeah. I know he's putting the work in, but I am too. And, you know, he's he can only really give credit to himself for what he's doing. And I just don't think he knows what I've been doing. So he's probably underestimating me. That's the perfect way to uh, live it. Thank you very much, Amon. Thanks, Christian. Right. Fabi, thanks thanks for having me. Thank you. We are here in LA with Lawrence Strand, who will be one of the uh, competitors in the main event of uh, the Mogul Moves chess boxing event. Uh, Lawrence, it's a pleasure. Thanks guys for having me, as always. How are you feeling? Two uh, nights away from the big fight, you've been training for this for, what, eight weeks now? It's no, been longer. intense preparation for you. Tell us a bit about that, how are you feeling? 
Right now I feel tired <laughs> to be because it's quite late here and I've been going to bed quite early. Uh, just not not through choice. It's just like I've passed out. Um, yeah, I've been training uh, the boxing side mostly for this event since uh, pretty much I was told about the event, which was around August time, end of July, August. So it's been quite a few months. And um, yeah, obviously being here now, everything is becoming very real. <laughs> and it's, you know, with every hour that passes, the uh, the gravity of the event starts to become more real as well because it's a huge stadium. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of people watching either concurrently or otherwise. The event's going to get millions of views in total because of the other people participating. So it's not just some small event in some dinky stadium where you're going to get 200 people and that's it. This is going to be on the internet forever. And as a result, I really wanted to do as much as I could. Um, I'm not a professional boxer. Uh, I've never had a boxing fight, neither has my opponent. Boxing is a huge passion of mine though. Um, it has been for years. And as many people already watching this know, I actually belong to a chess boxing club in Berlin, where I currently live. Uh, there are a few chess boxing clubs all over the world, but I belong to the Berlin one, and it's a very special one because the creator of chess boxing, who unfortunately died a few years ago, is one of my best friends. Um, he, he, he founded chess boxing, and he was living in Berlin originally from Holland. So there's a lot of sentimental value and there's a lot of personal value. This is more than just a one-off event for me. This is like a massive, massive deal. Big passion of mine. And, uh, what was the name of the originator of the Ipe, creator? His name was Ipe Rubin. Mm -hmm. um, he was a uh, top guy. Uh, he was an artist. He was a visionary. He was uh, a bon vivant. He was... Uh, uh, he was just fantastic, and he, we we were all really just gobsmacked and gutted when he suddenly died. He really just died like that in a flick, um, beginning of COVID, mid middle of 2020. Um, and it was really funny because when I was getting to know him and getting really friendly with him, he said, Lawrence, I'd love to see you fight one day, do a chess boxing fight. I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. Come on, man. I mean, I've just started boxing. Um, why am I going to get in the ring, get beat up, for what reason? He said, no, one day you're going to fight. And here I am. And um, even though I'm not really a big believer in the supernatural and that sort of thing, I really do hope he's watching down on us on, on, for this event because uh, I'd like to do him proud. Uh, so was it Ludwig who first came to you with the idea that you would be doing a chess boxing this year against the mom? Yeah, so it was a combination of uh, the, the Ludwig team and uh, actually Danny from chess.com reached out and said hey would you be interested in a chess boxing fight and at first I was like can you give me a bit more info and he said yeah it's probably going to be LA or Vegas and I was like whoa mm -hmm. and he said yeah it's probably going to be a big event and I was like who would I fight and he said it would be Aman and I was like okay I knew nothing about Aman from a has he fought before? Has he got boxing experience, MMA? What, what has he done? And Danny said, no. And I said, oh, right. Well, then, yeah, sign me up. But then I said, hold on a second. The last time I saw a man, he was a pencil like this. And the time Danny messaged me, I weighed about 96 kilos. I said, I'm going to be like 20 kilos heavier than this guy. And he said, well, OK, we're going to have to try and find a weight then that is acceptable for both of you, which we did for this contest which is 85 kilos um so just a bit of clarity yeah are you and Amon the same height no he's much taller than me he's a bit taller yes he's like I wouldn't say six, he's much foot, taller, six but... foot one isn't he i think he's and you're five i'm eleven, five eleven yeah something like that. not a huge difference but not a huge difference but you're you're quite a bit bulkier than him in that case. um i don't know if i am now because he's bulked up for this fight he's he really has. put he's yeah. put on weight i mean as i say when i remember him uh, I saw him in Berlin once, like a few years ago, I think it was just before Corona. But before that, I remember a man being a skinny dude, 
purple hair, mm -hmm. you know. So he's, you know, he's definitely bulked up and trained for this fight. And he had to put on weight and I had to lose weight. So it's interesting, uh, that kind of dynamic as well. But So what's the midweight that you more or less met at? 85 kilos, 85 187 kilos. pounds. Okay. So you've been training since 2020 in uh, boxing. But how frequently were you training? Yeah, so before? it's been really on and off because Corona killed the gym yeah. and I was also injured uh, for various parts throughout these past few years. So uh, it has been an on and off thing, but I would say definitely for the past year, I've been much more consistent um, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, I have a very dear friend, Eduardo, who has been kind of my personal coach. He's from Cuba. He's got Cuban um, amateur pedigree. There's a lot of people watching who like boxing. They are considered the best amateurs in the world, uh, all to do with movement and, uh, you know, not getting hit, um, which is a, a hard uh, skill to master. Uh, so, yeah, I, lo I mean, I just love boxing. I watch all the big boxing events. Um, I I study boxing. I, I'm a, you study boxing. I, I mean, I tell like, us a bit about that. I mean, like in terms of there is a culture I, in England. Oh, there's a culture. Definitely. I mean, like you know, I can I can differentiate between Cuban and Soviet style boxing to Western style to um, Mexican style. Uh, you know, I can I I I. I, uh, um, I you know, I'm when I watch fights, I look at professionals' footwork. I look at their head movement. I I try and pick up on small things, small tactics. I, again, I'm by no means an expert, and executing these things in your own fight is takes years and years and years and years. And when people watch me in a man, it's not going to be the, the, a polished, the prettiest thing. thing. It's yeah. not going. It's not going to be the prettiest event in the world. How would you describe your style? I don't have a style because I'm just too new to it. What I want to do is I want to be fluid with movement. I want to be able to uh, execute uh, technically good punches. Uh, you know, not not throwing arm punches, uh, protecting myself well, um, and you know, doing the fundamentals right. Ultimately, in this fight, what I want to do is I want to do the basics right make sure that I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be unloading Mike Tyson combos. Mm. <laughs> But do you think all that, like, watching, studying yeah. boxing, somehow you absorb it in your subconscious and it, it comes into play? You I don't realize? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't th I'm not sure if it does. That's the problem. It's, it's really a different animal when you get in the ring and you start fighting somebody because when you've got a moving target and that sort of thing, it's, it's very easy to watch something on TV and say, oh, he's, he's done X, Y, and Z, for you then to interpret it or emulate it in the ring. You don't actually have easy. time to think about it. You don't have time to think. How much of it is, I don't know, is psychological? Like most of it. Because one of the big things I learn, or I am learning, is that when you get hit for the first time, really seriously hit, it's quite a shock to the system. But it's an amazing feeling after. And getting used to getting hit is the big thing. Um, uh, and uh, for me, really, I just, you know, I, I don't have the fear now of getting smacked. I don't have the fear. If he knocks me out, he knocks me out. I, this is, and once you conquer that mentally, you're in a much better place. Also, um, I, I really want this fight. I mean, I really like, um, this is more than just a random fight for me. Whereas for Roman, I understand he's been training, but this is really my, pa like this has been my passion for years. So in that sense, I really want it. And I'm going to bite down on my gum shield and give it my all. There's just, I'm not going out easily on, you know, in this fight. Like he's going to have to literally knock me out, which he could do. Without giving away too yeah. much, uh, what would you say your strategy is, boxing-wise? We're, yeah. we're going to talk about the chess as well yeah. later on, but boxing-wise, what would you say your strategy will be on Sunday night? I mean, it's, it's a difficult one to say because I, I, 
I don't really know um, how Oman is, is going to box. What I will say is I am going to be aggressive. Uh, we don't have enough time to play the long game. It's 90 second rounds. It's very, very short. It's actually been shortened from what I thought it was, which was a bit, uh, let's just say, I wasn't particularly impressed with that, but it is what it is. Um, there's not enough time to just feel your opponent out. If my theoretical edge is in the boxing, and that's theoretical at this stage, then I have to press there. He theoretically is a better chess player than me, not even theoretically, objectively, he's a better chess player than me. He's a very decent blitz player. So I'm going to have to try and work him in the boxing. Um, so that, you know, I don't have a particular strategy, but I'm not going to be, you know, just uh, dancing around the ring, basically. Have you trained uh, chess and boxing, yes. combined chess yes. boxing? Yes. And what is the effect of getting hit in the head when it comes depends. to your chess abilities? Yeah, it depends. If you take a really bad hit and go immediately into the chess, it takes you a while to settle back in. Like, it, you, you just have to get your bearings, but it does take a while. However, I think in our case, Aman and I are in a very unique situation. We're both reasonably decent chess players, <laughs> accomplished chess players, and we can play chess on autopilot to a certain extent, right? We just can play intuitively Re let's say reasonably well, right? I mean, we, we've played enough blitz and bullet in our life to just be able to play intuitively and, and play okay. So it's a little bit different, but I don't know. I, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if one of us gets really hit or one of us gets in trouble in the boxing, how the, the transition to the chess is going to be. Actually, I wanted to, yeah. to expand on that a bit re because I recently played you know, push-up chess, which is obviously yeah. very similar. Yeah. But we did get a little bit winded yes. before getting back and seeing at the yes. board. And I realized when I sat back down yeah. that even though it's very mild physical exertion, yes. it still takes something out of you. It does. So it does. even apart from the fact that you might get hit or he might get hit, yes. and you know, might get yes. a bit woozy, yes. is it difficult to play when you're already, when you're physically tired? Yes. It's, it's, it, it is a different animal. I mean, it takes you a moment just to get settled in, so you do lose a bit of speed in general. Um, and that's gonna be key as well, because the likelihood is, and I say this just as a probability, the likelihood is that this match will be decided in the chess. Mm -hmm. There are only three rounds of boxing. Knocking somebody out is an incredibly tough thing to do. We're wearing 16 ounce gloves. Those are big gloves. It's really hard to knock somebody out with 16 ounce gloves. It's not 12 ounces, where if you connect, you really feel the knuckles through the glove. And you know, you could fit 16 ounce gloves padded, absorption all over the place, uh, surface area, whatnot. That's why we're wearing them. So the, the match is gonna be, in my opinion, most likely decided in the chess and that's where his advantage is. So, I'm wondering a bit about the psych because to me the psychology is a really yeah. interesting part. As a yeah, you know, he's a grandmaster. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, but he's not. He's never. Well, you have also yeah. never played under the stressful conditions yes. of having to yes. to do non chess stuff at the same yes. time. So for me, that's like. An, I mean, we can't really speculate, but that's yes. a really interesting. No, it's factor. it's really interesting, and that's what makes the sport so interesting. There's so many elements to this sport which make it so interesting, and I hope people watching, you know, take a take a keen interest in it. Because, for example, you know, in let's say more uh, regular chess boxing events where there are more chess rounds and more boxing rounds. Um, Everything that is happening on the board and everything that is happening in the ring has a direct effect on how, your how, how you should adapt your strategy. For example, if I've got a very bad position on the board and it's round two, and I know I'm playing a very strong player like Aman, who's gonna beat me from this position 90% of the time, I know I have to knock him out in the boxing. I can't just try and win on points because he's gonna finish me off before the time ends, the, the clock ends, right? Same the other way. If I'm, uh, you know, clearly, you know, getting murdered in the boxing, right? And it's my, my, you know, and I'm playing the I know that I have to basically play instantly to be able to either flag him or try and beat him in the chess. So it's, um, 
it's really interesting the dynamic there between how you have to shift your strategy depending on how you're doing both on the board and off the board, which is very different, of course, to if you just play one of the games because you have a more singular strategy. So I'm wondering, just, just speculating, but assuming you have a, a dominating position on the yeah. board, maybe it's a good idea to stay aggressive so that you don't... You know, In the box. Yeah, yeah, so you don't think I need to like tighten up and then... Yeah, I mean, allowing your opponent just to move on you and just start throwing on you anyway is never really a good idea. I mean, there are some times, like if you see some boxing fights where you know you've won the fight, where you can dance around the ring a little bit. I don't think that's going to be possible here. I don't think the ring is that big to mm -hmm. be able to dance around, by the way. I don't have the exact measurements, but it's not like a standard sized huge ring. So dancing around is not going to be that easy anyways. And yeah, the chessboard in the ring. So the chessboard like this gets brought in on a table. We have uh, noise cancelling headphones, both of us, because there's going to be live commentary for the event for the entire crowd. By the way, there's going to be over 10,000 people at this event. It's mm. like a stadium, right? We're playing in a stadium. It's completely nuts. Uh, so there's going to be commentary by Levi Rosman, Gotham Chess, uh, and perhaps some others, some other uh, distinguished guests. Uh, maybe they'll ask you to come up to mention something. I don't know. Um, and so obviously we can't hear what the commentary team is talking about just in case they talk about a move and then after the two minutes of the chess round they take off our, our, um, our, our noise cancelling headphones and then we go for the boxing so they just take it out and in, mm -hmm. on, a, on a table. Did you do any situational uh, training like basically you have a worse position on the board and no. you have to go all in in the boxing? No. Is that something that you're thinking about? Let's no. say you have a losing position. If I have a losing position, under, let's say a piece. Yeah. If, and you know you're going to yeah, lose on the chest. Yeah. How hard are well, you? Well, you just if I if I know I'm I'm lost on the board and it's the last round of boxing, there's only one thing to do. I have to try and knock the guy out. Literally, I have to just go all in on the boxing because, again, I'm not playing a player, which I could do in, for example, if I go to my chess boxing club in Berlin, if I'm playing a guy who's 1700 or 1500 and I'm a piece down, I might still win the game, right? Theoretically, I could still win, but I'm not against a man, right? You've said you also study a lot and we've been chatting, uh, chatting a little bit and we discussed the fact that Amon was not posting a lot of things yeah. on the internet. You didn't know how he's training, yeah. how long, how much he's training, things of that nature, but recently he's been yeah. posting a bit. Yeah. What did you see in his... Uh, well, he's definitely improved. I mean, when, when he posted his first video, I can't remember when it was, I was like, dude, tell me this was... I actually messaged Eric, <laughs> and I said, Eric, this video that Aman posted was... Tell me this was a few months ago, and not like six, you know, five weeks before the fight, because the guy is just a total beginner. Um, and he said, no, it was done months ago. So the improvement in Aman I have seen massively. He's definitely got, you know, he's done really well. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what I think he does badly at the moment. Um, I also do tons of things badly. I'm, I'm no authority in boxing. For me to talk about how bad somebody else boxes is quite cheeky in some way. Or no, how, it's not that how bad he boxes, but what I think, what clear things that I think he needs to improve. But... Um, you know, he has been good uploading recently, uh, you know, he's 10 years young, no, maybe not 10 years, how old is he, like 7 years younger than me, 8 years younger than me? Born in 91, does that sound about right? Yeah, I think it's about, um, just 30 maybe? 30? Something like okay, that. Okay, so he's only 6 or 7 years younger than me, um, you know, he's, uh, he's taller than me, he's got a lot of natural physical advantages. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, look, ultimately, I think a lot of it is going to be who can buy down on the gum shield and want it more. Mm. So, like, I'm going in there with this attitude. I just don't care if he hits me. Like, that's it. I've just accepted I'm going to get here. I'm going to bite down on the gum shield. And he's going to have to find a clean, clean shot to just knock me out. Do you, do you feel like he has a lot of power in his punches or potentially has a lot of power in his punches? I don't know. It's unclear to me. 
I, I, I just can't tell you that. Um, I'll tell you on the day. <laughs> I will probably see on the day. You'll see on the day. But I can tell you this. Um, if I land clean shots, it's going to hurt because I've been working very hard on making sure technically that I, I can punch accurately and with power using talk, um, using, uh, you know, the things that you should be using in order to punch well, not arm punching, punching from the waist, punching from the other shoulder, shoulder snap from the waist. Um, What's roughly the breakdown in terms of your preparation workouts between cardio, the technical bo boxing aspect, and weight training or trying to build muscle? Right, so weight training is a tiny part. You basically don't do any weight training, very, very little. If you do, it's mostly cardio related. Very, very light weights, lots of repetitions. Um, you don't want to get big. I mean, heavyweight boxing is slightly different, but firstly, I had to lose weight for the fight. So putting on tons of muscle was gonna impede me. Secondly, if you've got more muscle, right, muscle requires oxygen right to to function well so you gas really quickly if you're big and muscly so it's not actually about being big and muscly it's about being lean um so weight training i have i, I still i still do weights and i still uh do do little bits here and there but it's being mostly i mean boxing workouts are the most intense workouts to push ever. to push back yeah. a, a little bit on that you mentioned at the beginning that the rounds are very short. Yeah, they are very short. One and a half minutes, yeah. three rounds. Yes. Did you feel like maybe you should put some uh, muscle on you and have some strength going into that? Well, I, I have strength. I mean, I, I have muscle. I, I, I still have, I, I am t reason. I mean, you'll see on the... Because you're talking about like 12 uh, round matches type of thing. Yeah, right? like I mean... It's you, much you shorter can, than that. Yeah, no, it's much shorter than that. But still, I, I mean, for me... For this fight, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, before the fight, I mean, I was still going to gym. I've still got muscle memory. I've been going to gym for ages, and I was, I used to just basically do weights. You'll see on the day of the weigh-in with, with my top off. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ripped like you know, I'm not ripped at all or anything like that. But I'm in okay shape, so I still feel like I've got power and strength. And again. It's not really going to, power and strength is not going to be the deciding factor here. It's going to be more accuracy, speed. Um, I don't need to be able to have incredible strength to probably knock a man out and vice versa. Like, you know, and yeah, as I say, it's, it's, it's going to be hard to knock him out anyway. It's any, I think it's, it's going to be hard for him to knock me out. Have you, have you done any flexibility or yeah. yoga, meditation, no, those uh, sorts of more cerebral... Not, not, not really. Um, I've tried in the past, but for this fight, I've not really done yoga or meditation. A little bit of stretching, but no, it's been mostly um, down the cold gym. I mean... I assume stretching is just to prevent injury. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm even carrying some light injuries going into this fight. I mean, it's very difficult not to go into a fight, not injured unless you're a super pro and you can get all the treatments in the world. I'm also doing this at a very old age. Theory, I mean, objectively speaking, to have your first fight at 36 is crazy old. And I've had, you know, bad knees, bad back forever. So I am a bit injured, but I just don't care. I, it's just, I'm just going to go fight through the pain, the adrenaline is going to pump and that's it. Is there any uh, fear going into uh, this fight? Not really. Are you feeling anything right now? So many eyes are going to be yeah. on you. No, uh, there'll be nerves on the day. Yeah, there'll be nerves, but fear is not the right. I don't fear it. I don't fear uh, After what's happened this year, I don't fear anything. Um, I, I am prepared to get clean, knocked out. And if he knocks me out, so be it. I'll get knocked out and we move on. And we say, you know what? I put in a lot of effort, I trained hard, I had the balls to get in the ring in front of all those people to put my neck on the line, so be it. But it, the, the way you describe it, it, it seems 
like a very personal personal thing, like almost yes. like a self improvement journey. Massive. Like, I'll be honest with you. It's for me. I think it's my most important event ever of anything. Like, sure, I've done chess events, commentary events for world championships, this, that, and the other. But as a as a personal thing, this this means this is very close to my heart, especially because of my you know my buddy who died who 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 made this thing what it is. Um, that there's that sentimental value. There's um, you know I've been talking about the fight to a lot of people for a long time. I've got people that uh, have are supporting me in this fight. Right, I've managed to get. A few sponsors, which has been amazing, because you know, it costs a lot of money to train to come out here. To LA is is not a cheap place to uh, to, to operate. Um, so I've got a duty to those people, and you know, uh, it, it is it isn't just an. For some people, this might just be an, a nice little niche event. I actually see a future with chess boxing i see a future of it for it as a sport i think it's got a lot of potential i think it can attract an incredible amount of people because it just ticks so many boxes the actual live events are so much fun as well everybody gets involved no matter what your chess level it's not elitist and so so regardless of the result in your yeah. fight we're likely to see you back in the ring at some point my my, I was speaking with my coach, and he was. I said, you know what? If I lose, I'm probably not going to fight again. And he said, no. Listen, once you've tasted the the rush of being in there and the people cheering you on and that sort of thing, you'll want to fight again. Uh, I'm not the strongest player ever, or me or a man to chess box. Just so you guys know, there is. So who are the best players? Ever? Well, the best player ever to. A chess box and have more than one fight is Grandmaster Eric Brown, who is also oh, okay. living in Berlin. I played him a few times. He's a world champion, right? He, he, was, he world wasn't champion. world. I'm not sure if he was world champion. I know he had a. I think he had think three he was, fights. He's quite quite stocky. Quite so. Quite stocky. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't uh, fight anymore. He had three fights. I've seen Eric a few times mm -hmm. uh, in Berlin. Um, spoken to him obviously about it and. He is rated 2600, so he is easily the strongest player to actually do it. And I think he won all of his fights, but he won the chess. He won the chess part of his fights. But uh, I assume he's also decent as a, a fighter. I I have to say I haven't really seen Eric fight, but I guess he's but reasonably decent. And right. he yeah. and he definitely trained very hard. Mm -hmm. I will say this: the gym I go to is very old school. When we sparred. It wasn't this. Let's go fifty percent. Like when you hear people say today we're going to spar, we're going to go fifty percent. It's like fucking all out, mm. just <laughs> like literally trying to kill each other. Um, so Did he would have tried hard. You have uh, knocked out. You I've been out? I've been floored. Yes, I've been knocked out, um, and I've been I've had to take a knee in sparring, um, which is fine. Liver shots. Liver shots, yeah, spleen that. shots. Yeah. I have it, you know. What's the thing that put you down for the longest, or or, or made I've you feel like a, I can't even walk? I had an awful spleen shot, and when they get you in the spleen or in or in the liver, the pain is so acute. It's really weird. It's like it's a sharp pain, and it it kind of you can't. It's almost like you can't. Your body shuts. Yeah, your body shuts. So you can't just go, oh, that hurt me, and carry on. You literally have to go on a knee. And it, the pain is just immense. Um, and most boxers have experienced it, like a spleen or a, or a liver shot. Um, so even apart from being knocked out, there are some shots that would incapacitate you to the point that you can't play chess, basically. Well, oh, if, I, if, he gives, if, he, if he liver shots me and puts me on a knee, I'm, I'm going to be done. I mean, there's good, I, getting up from that is almost impossible. And even if you get up playing chess, if I if it's like five seconds before the end of the round and then I can play chess and try and recover, like that would be extremely lucky. But no, I, these shots are just awful. I mean, have a look at some fights, some boxing fights where you where you receive. Have a look at how Canelo delivers a liver shot. You'll 
you you just don't get up. It's so painful. It's more painful than getting knocked. It's more fa like getting punched in the face and getting punched in the head. It kind of rattles you a little bit, but it's not like those shots. Those are the worst shots to the body. Well, Lawrence, uh, a final message. I'm sure Aman will be seeing this before the fight. A final message for him. Well, look, I, it's not, I don't really have a, a, a anything to say to him. Look, I, I want to say something as well. You know, I like Aman very much. I've got nothing against Aman, but he's picked a really bad time to fight me because um, I'm going to take his head off. And I mean that you know, in the friendliest possible terms. Uh, he, you know, I've had a rotten few months, and when I bite down on the gum shield, he's going to have to just be prepared for, for for an onslaught. I'm not going to slow down. I'm in physical shape, uh, you know, uh, and he's going to get battered basically. And I apologize in advance. But it is what it is. Um, had he caught me at another time, maybe things would be different. But unfortunately, Aman is going to be the, the object of my frustration. And I'm going to let it out brutally on him. And that's it. That's all there is to say. Some strong words. I mean, it, it just is what it is. It's, it's not his fault. Uh, it's just the reality of what's happened. So, uh, you know, if I, if Aman, um, this has been pre if I do knock you out, apologies in advance, uh, you know, but we're there to, we're there to fight and we're there to, to, to hurt each other ultimately. So it is what it is. That's a great way to uh, put it and a great way to live it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks guys. I appreciate it.